lang. Absheni. Kuya Mora. Good morning. And, and welcome, welcome to Cappuccino, Cappuccino with, with Kia and, and Karen. Karen. I'm Kia. And I'm Karen. We have our three morning services at 8.30, 9.45, 11 a.m. And don't forget our recharge service at 5 p.m. Power Kids will open throughout all the Sunday services. Yes, and Kia, do you need prayer? I need prayer. All the time. If you do not know, we have a Friday morning prayer every Friday morning at 6 a.m. to 6.30 a.m. here in the downstairs hall. And if you ca cannot make it physically, please do join us on our online platform or on our very own radio station. And in Mountain Movers Youth, I've Woo. been there once. It is amazing. It is great. So if you are between the ages of, what is it, a a you know, it's 13 to 19, please do come through. Wow. It is from 7 to 9 p.m. every Friday evening. So parents, please do bring your youth through and if they eat, is going to be amazing it's always lit always amazing always, always. lit <laughs> so we have our sunday playlist yes yeah. yeah, so if you like the songs that we sing on a sunday and you just want to fellowship throughout the mm -hmm. you can you can scan a qr code to access all the songs that we sing by our yt music apple apple music and don't forget spotify so please do scan the QR code. Yes, and then we have a save the date. A worship evening is always the best. Yeah. I love it. So worship night on the 29th of September at 5 p.m. in the main auditorium. So please do not forget that. Save the date on the 29th of September. You will not regret coming through. Yes, and we have something amazing we have our volunteer team night which is happening on the first of october at 7 pm at the power kids entrance hall so it is gonna be so amazing this is just a fellowship amongst all the volunteers to get to to be close to one another to be close to one another and worship god together so if you want to join and find out more about fellowship please come through it's so amazing yes and if you don't remember anything of what we've just said please go and give our social media pages a follow and a like and you will stay abreast with everything happening here at word and life yes. so without further ado let's cross over to pastor basil bye amen davi amen uh, yeah let me not say nothing uh, that step was a bit big there for me but i made it eh? i made it <laughs> Listen, friends, uh, uh, we got some bad news this morning, man. I want to pray. I don't want to talk too much about it. Uh, I just want us to pray for churches in our area, for the pastors, their wives, their families, um, also every single member in every church, their marriages, their families. Can we do that this morning? Would that be okay? And then we're going to ask God just to speak to us. Father, we thank you. Uh, Father, we just want to pray for all the churches in our area. We pray for every uh, pastor, every reverend, every priest. Uh, please help them, Father God. Their marriages, their wives, their families, uh, as they stand in leadership. We pray now for every member of every church in the Kuruleni area, the Gauteng area. We just pray your blessing upon them and help them, strengthen them and encourage them. And now, Lord, we pray for us seated here today. Would you speak a living word? Would you encourage us? Would you lift us? This we pray in Jesus' name. And everyone said? Amen. Amen. So this morning, obviously, we are continuing with a series. I think it's week four. Uh, we are talking about state of the heart. I just want to say this this morning, and then we're going to get into it. Um, my experience of God, my experience, and I, I, I'm not the end all and be all, and the expert on God. I know a little bit of God. In my short Christianity, in serving him and following him, but my experience of being around him, my experience being connected to God, even just as a normal Christian, not just a spiritual leader, has always been that God is a motivating God. God is a inspiring God. <coughs> God is a God who heals. God is a God who forgives. And remember, I said this last week, there's a tonality to when you start to serve God. And you might not hear the audible voice of God, and I think, uh, be very careful, and this is just my experience again. Be very careful of people that say, oh, you know, I was talking to God, and God said, um, no, nothing wrong with that. I just think sometimes it's, it's people's own voice telling them, and they haven't balanced that out with the word of God. They haven't sought wise counsel around those things. But here, here's the thing on God specifically. God's voice, even in correction, is a voice of love and motivation and inspiration. Now, there's another voice. The voice of the enemy is a voice that is often critical. It is a voice that confuses. 
It is a voice that takes away peace where God's voice is life giving. The enemy's voice is life taking, death giving, in fact. And there's a spirit of confusion, a spirit of fear, a spirit of uh, being rushed, a feeling of coercion. Do you know what the word coercion means? It means being forced to do something by threat of fear or something like that. And it's in fact the very opposite of the voice of God. And that's why it is so important as we continue with this series on state of the heart that we consistently form our hearts around God and what He wants for us, not what we think is good for us. Your heart, you know, you'll hear modern philosophy Well, people will say, just follow your heart, friend. Just follow your heart. Do whatever your heart says, friend. It's okay. But the Bible says that your heart is deceptive above all else. And the, that's not what the word says. No scripture says follow your heart. The Bible says follow the word of the Lord. The word, and then from that place, our hearts become formed in God. And we ought to, and so when you talk to me today about is prayer important, of course it's important. Because it's in prayer that you receive this life-giving inspiration from God. It is the very lifeblood for your Christianity and your walk with God. That's how important prayer is. But it's important that we form our hearts with God consistently. And so Proverbs 4.23 says, above all else, this is the key verse for this series. I think we maybe will do one more week. Is that okay? Are you enjoying this? Is it helping you? So there's at least over 30 to 40 different states of the heart, if not more, found within Scripture. We've just touched on a few. And so Proverbs 4.23, above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Another translation says it so beautifully, says that from your heart flow the issues of your life. Everything in your life flows from your heart. Everything, all the good things, all the things you struggle with. All of those things flow out of your heart, ultimately because there's a belief system in your heart that says, I trust God in this, but maybe I don't trust God in that. I like God in this, but I don't necessarily believe God for that. And be very careful, those things we bring before God. And so number one, I believe that if you're a Christian, if you're someone following Jesus, are there people like that in the house here today? Yeah. Number one, you need to have a purposed heart. A heart that is purposed, a heart that is set on purpose, knowing that why you are here. Number one, before I get into the scripture, number one, everyone in this room, if you're a Christian, your first purpose in life is to worship, follow, obey, and be connected to God. That's your first purpose in life, above everything else. Some people put their marriages above that, uh, and that's, that's the scripture where Jesus says, if anyone would follow me, he must deny himself even father and mother. What is Jesus saying? Is Jesus saying family's bad? No, 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 no. Listen to what he's saying. He's saying, is there anything in your life, including a relationship that stands before my relationship with you? I am first in your life. I am God in your life. No one else can be God in your life. Not money, not people, not marriage, not family, nothing, not even ministry. I am first in your life. Can I get an amen? And he's not saying those other things are bad, but they have their place in your life. They are never God. It is the wrong ordering of those things in our lives that causes brokenness and damage. By the way, that's called idolatry. Anything we place before God is called an idol. Anything, anything you place before God is an idol. And so, our main purpose in life is to bring worship to God, to love God, to grow closer to Him. And that means you all have a purpose. And out of that purpose, everything else you do in life is formed first from your relationship with God. Listen to Jesus in John 18, 37. He says, this is why I was born. And for this reason, I have come into the world to be a witness to the truth. Jesus is teaching us He has a purpose. His purpose is to bear witness to the truth, the gospel, the good news, to share that. Uh, John, the apostle, writes later of Jesus, he says, For this purpose, the Son of God was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. 
<coughs> Jesus is the most self-aware leader in human history. Why can I say that? Well, number one, he knew when he was going to be born. He knew what his life's purpose was. He knew when he was going to die, how he was going to die, what would happen after his death, exactly the right way. And he tells people long before all of these events happen. And he's totally self-aware and he's purposed in the call of God for his life. Now, here's the problem. Many Christians come to church and you'll hear this even from Christians. They say, you know, pastor, I just don't know my purpose. And I want to tell you, number one, your purpose is to worship God, number one. And in that, everything else that flows from that place, every decision you make, everything else you do is purposed around, number one, serving and loving and worshiping God. Your marriage, your family, your work, your business, all of those things belong to Him and are purposed in Him to bring Him glory, to bring Him honor, to bring Him love and adoration. And so when Christians say, Pastor, I don't know what my purpose is. I don't think you understand the Bible. I don't think you understand what Christ has done for you the day you were born again and saved. Number one, he's given a calling, the Bible says. We are all called. We are all a royal priesthood of believers. And number one, everyone in this room has a calling and a destiny in Christ. Can I get an amen? Amen. And so don't let the enemy or anyone lie to you and tell you that you don't have a calling. You are all called by God. But I don't know if we all hear God and I don't know if we all obey God. That's the difference. The Bible says many are called, but few are chosen. Why? And it doesn't mean, here, let me just help you breathe because I see some people have stopped breathing. Let me just help you. Because now you're saying, oh, we're all called. Does it all mean we're gonna, be, we're gonna be pastors? No, it does not all mean you're gonna be pastors. But it means where you are in your life, you are called to bring glory to God. Whether it's in your workplace, your university, your school, your marriage, your family, all of those things are to bring glory to God the Father, God the Son, Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit. Can I get an amen? Amen? amen. amen. All right, so what's the opposite of a purposed heart? And how do we get a purposed heart? How do we get a purpose of? Well, number one, I want to help you. One of the ways that we can hear the voice of God is to become quiet. After you've prayed, after you've prayed and said and done what you need to do, you need to get quiet with God. You need to spend time to listen to what God's saying to you. I would, I personally get out a journal and I start writing down things that I feel is God. And one of the ways I know it's God, it lines up 100% with the word of God. God will never speak to me anything that doesn't line up with the word of God. God won't say to you, Basil, I want you tomorrow to start selling cocaine on the streets of Boxburg. I'm like, yes, God, that's a vision. I hear you. I hear you. I'll be known as Pastor Powder. (laughs) You, You laugh. But let me tell you, there are people that say God told them to do things like that. I know of a real story where a pastor went to speak to a drug dealer. And he was sharing, I've told you this many times. He was sharing the gospel with the guy. God says, I know the Bible. He says, pastor, come stand over here. And they put all the bankies out in the morning. He says, pastor, let's pray that God will bless my business to sell all of these. That's a real life story. Happened about 10 to 15 years ago here in Boxburg North. So we laugh, like we laugh at that. Well, <laughs> God would never do that. But there are people that are so confused, they don't even understand the Bible. It's busy destroying lives. And so your purpose is always in lifting up the name of God and helping people in a wholesome, good way. Can I get an amen? amen. Not in a way that destroys lives. So what is the, so the, one of the ways we hear the voice of God is we become quiet. Be still and know that I am God. Be still. Let God speak. Let God speak through his word, through godly counsel, through your quiet moments. After you've prayed, become quiet. Many people just ramble on and they never allow God to speak to them. They never allow God to break through to share something that he wants them to do. Here's the second thing. What's the opposite of a purposed heart is a confused heart. Remember, I spoke to you about the tonality of God. There's also a tonality to the enemy. One of the ways he speaks is through confusion. Through the multitude of voices. The voice of entertainment, the voice of popularity, the voice of work, the voice of busyness, the voice of money, the voice of debt, the voice of family, 
societal pressures, the, the voices of social media. And so Christians are so confused because they're hearing all these voices and which one is God? It's one of the ways the enemy confuses us. The, the James 1.6 says, but when you ask God, you must believe and, know, and not doubt. James 1.6 but when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. So what happens to people around purpose is they get confused. They get confused in what they need to do in life. And they, they, they don't quiet down enough to hear the voice of God. That God might direct your path. That God might speak a living word to you. That God might open up a new destiny, a new dream, a new vision for you and in you and through you. And so one of the, the voices we hear is a, a voice of confusion. The second thing is, I really believe as Christians, we need to have an obedient heart. I've heard so much preaching about faith and wonderful. We must have faith. For without faith, we cannot please God, says the scriptures. But in having faith, there is something else that must happen. God speaks and we must have an, a, a heart of obedience. A heart that does what God says. Romans 6, 17, Paul is speaking to the church. But thank God, though you were once slaves of sin, you have become obedient with all of your hearts. With all of your heart. To the standard teaching in which you were instructed, to which you were committed. So Paul is saying that if we're going to follow God, it's not just about coming to church. It's not just about Worshipping God and praying and hearing God. The book of James says, be not hearers of the word, but be doers of the word. In other words, once we hear God speak, we must do what he says. Does Jesus not take it even further? He says, if you love me, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. This is what Jesus says. He says, one of the ways I know you love me is you do what I say. It's basically what he's saying. How do I know you love me? Because you follow my commandments. When I speak to you, you actually do what I say. You're not just a guy that comes to church, raises your hands, shouts hallelujah, and has a good time, leaves the church and just do what you want. You do what I say. That's how I know you love me. That's how I know you're true. That's how I know you're sincere. That's how I know you're a worshiper of God. When I speak, you do what I ask you to do. We ought to have obedient hearts. And let me tell you, the world is telling you not to have an obedient heart. The world's telling you, just follow your heart, do whatever you want. As long as it doesn't hurt anyone, you're okay. It's going to be cool. Just do whatever you want. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says we follow God. We worship God. We obey God. Because he's God. You know, presidents make me laugh. I, I, we need them. We need them. But they make me laugh because they think they're so important. There is no one more important in your life than God. Can I get an amen? amen? The president is someone, but he's not God. And, and we need to get to a place in our lives where God has that place in our life as God. And so Paul teaches in Romans 6, 17. How do we get an obedient heart? Well, number one, you must know the word. Do you read the word? Do you study the word? Are you looking at the commandments of God? Is God speaking to you about doing certain things? Just a couple of ideas. God's maybe telling you to get out of debt. Why? Because God maybe wants you to become a tither. And you're like, no, 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 God, I enjoy spending. God says, but I want, I want, to, I want you to move into an area of blessing where I want to enlarge your life. On, and you're going, no, 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 God, tithing's Old Testament. You're telling God tithing's Old Testament? you telling God tithing's Old Testament? <laughs> That's crazy, dude. God's given you a command to be a giver. And God wants you to come out of debt. And you're going, no, 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 no. God, me and my friend are discussing this new business venture. We need to just go loan a couple of hundreds of thousands. And we're going to be a, a for a while. And then we're going to be tithers. And God says, you don't, you're not even tithing with what you have now. There's no ways you're going to do that when it comes. You're not even faithful in the little. Why would I give you more? And here's how this works, by the way. That verse, you're not even faithful in the little. So God speaks a little to you. You're not even faithful in the little that he's spoken you to. And then you go, God, tell me more. And God says, no, be obedient and faithful in the little that I've given you in sharing with you. And as that becomes greater, I'll share more with you. 
because I see I can trust you with more. That's even his voice. Because we don't even honor him in being obedient. And so what's the opposite of that? Of course, disobedient hearts. Having hearts that are disobedient. How do we get disobedient hearts? Well, number one, it starts out by ignoring God. Exactly like I was sharing with you now. God speaks. We don't do it immediately. So we're not directly sinning, but we are sinning because the word sin means to miss the mark. God has asked you to do something. He's targeted. He's purposed your life for a reason. And you're saying, no, just a bit to the left. That's what the word sin actually means. Missing the mark of what God has called you to be and do. And it starts by ignoring God. Just ignoring God. Saying, okay, God, I'll get to it next week. I'll do it. And when next week comes, you've already forgotten. I remember a good friend of mine, Dr. John Mpapuli. We used to have a service here on Thursday nights. We called it the weekender. Who, rem- who remembers the weekender? You remember the weekender? Was it, was it good? And you know what he taught? He says, guys, we're praying for deeper revelation in the church. We want this great revelation. He says, go back to the last time God instructed you to do something because that's exactly where your relationship paused. Go back to that discussion. Go repent and say, Lord, forgive me and let me just do what you've asked me to do. And then your relationship can go forward. Imagine having a real life relationship where your wife's asking you to do stuff. You completely ignore her and just live on your own terms. And then you're still saying, hey, me and my wife, we're on good terms. We're happy and everything. But you totally ignore her. Totally ignore her. And then you expect that relationship to be healthy and happy. And your wife one day says, listen, it's over. It's, I'm divorcing you. You say, but why? I'm with you. I provide for you. So, but you don't listen to me. You don't even talk to me. You just do what you want. There's something wrong there, right? But that's exactly how many Christians operate. We talk to God, we tell God hello, but then we totally, completely ignore Him. Jeremiah 5.23 talks about these people, but these people have a disobedient and rebellious heart. They have turned aside and gone back. May, May no one in this church have that kind of heart. May we have hearts that say, God, as you speak, I'll do. Amen. And lastly, as we come to close, I really believe that as you follow God, there's this great story before I tell you. Uh, The next one is having an open heart. So there's this great parable, uh, not parable, there's this great true story where Jesus healed a deaf person. And Jesus says to his ear, be opened, and his, his ear is opened. Now that story is completely true. Jesus really healed someone's ear to open. But that story is also speaking to us symbolically. Let me explain. There are many of us that are seated here in the church and our ears are closed to God. We might not be physically deaf, but we are spiritually deaf. And there's a deep symbolism there of is your life open to God? Are you open to his spirit? Are you open to his word? Are you open to the move of his, 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 his heart? Are you ready to do what he says? And this is what it means to have an open heart. Listen here, Acts 16, 14. And those who were listening to us, there was a woman called Lydia from the city of Thyatira, a dealer in fabrics dyed in purple. She was already a worshiper of God. And the Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what was being said. Listen to that. The Lord opened up her heart. Go read that in the Bible. He opened up her heart that she would pay attention to what was being said. Here it is. Is your heart open to the things of God? How does our heart close off? Well, one of the ways our heart closes off is we get hurt in ministry, we get hurt in church, we get hurt in life, and our hearts become dull and closed. We don't have open hearts anymore. Say, Lord, I want my heart wants to be open to your move, to your touch, to your guidance, to your instruction. Can the Lord look at your life and say, your heart is open, just like your ears and your eyes are open. Jesus many times talks about this generation that have blind eyes and deaf ears. He says, I speak happy songs and you don't dance. I, I, I play funeral music for you and you don't mourn. He says, what must I do to speak to you? You're blind and deaf. May it not be said of this church 
And so the opposite of an open heart is a dull or closed heart. Matthew 13, 15. For the hearts of this people have grown dull, their ears hard of hearing and their eyes closed. How do we keep an open heart? In prayer. Asking God to forgive us. Who's had a bath here? Put up your hand. It's a wonderful day if you've had a bath. Put up your hand. Who's had a bath recently? Even maybe yesterday or this morning. Put up your hand. This is a wonderful moment in the church. God sees your hand. Put up your hand if you've bathed. I hope all hands go up. But if you don't, we still love you. We might not sit near you, but we still love you. But here's the point, right? So you will do that physically to stay clean. Why don't you do that spiritually every day? To take a bath, I know it's a weird image, a bath in the blood of the lamb because we've all sinned and we've all gone astray. We all need his forgiveness. Daily, take a bath in the blood. Open up your heart. Say, Lord, forgive me. Help me to grow in what you want and instruct me now. You do that every day with physical soap. Why don't you do that in your prayer life? Some of you are sitting with issues that have come with you for years. Psychologists call it stacking. Emotional brokenness that you haven't dealt with for years. And it's affecting your heart. May we be a people with open hearts, obedient hearts, loving hearts, generous hearts before the Lord. Amen. Can we stand as we pray? This morning, I want to pray with you. Father, we thank you, Lord, this morning that there is not a spirit of condemnation in this church, but a spirit that says, Lord, I've heard what you've said. We repent, Lord, and we'll do better. A spirit that inspires that we'd be purposed around your calling, purposed around the things of the kingdom, the things of Jesus, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Help us, Lord, this morning. Have your way in us, we pray. Bless your church, that we be purposed around your things. And Lord, if our hearts become dull, would you enliven it again through the power of your Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit, to come and touch us, that we would love you more and love people more. We pray this, we ask, in Jesus' name, someone who believed God, would you say amen? amen? Now I want to pray one more prayer and then we're going to ask Sherry to come up. While every eye is closed, every heart may be open. If you know Jesus now, you're praying. We want to just allow an opportunity for people who don't know Jesus. Jesus is the ultimate heart transformer. Heart, heart surgeon. And maybe today you say, I want to give my heart to Jesus. I want to give my life and my destiny, my purpose, my calling. I want to lay it in his hands. I want to ask him to be my Lord and Savior. I don't want to leave this church today not calling upon his name. If that's you, we're not going to call you forward. We're going to pray for you right there where you're standing. If that's you today, just lift up your hand. Just lift up your hand. We're going to pray for you right there. Thank you. God sees that hand. God sees that hand. God sees your hearts. Anyone else, quickly, just lift up your hand. I'm not going to stretch this out anymore. We're just going to pray now. If you quickly want to be included in this prayer, lift up your hand. Thank you, Father. Amen. Let's pray together. Let's say, Father God, this good morning, I give you my heart. I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior of my life. He died on the cross was buried in the grave and on the third day he rose to life in the flesh he is alive and well praying for me now washing me clean by his blood Lord Jesus I accept you as Lord and Savior of my life come fill me now with the Holy Spirit that I might serve you all the days of my life until I see you in the land of eternity face to face in Jesus name and everyone said Amen, Amen. let's give the Lord a hand Hey everyone we hope that the word has inspired you and that you'll have a super blessed week if you'd like to give into our church we have four ways that you can give the page is available on our website 
And if you're physically in the area, we have church every single Sunday, 8.30, 9.45, and 11 o'clock in the morning, then again in the evening at 5 p.m. in the main auditorium. That's for our Boxwood campus. We'll see you soon, church.